it turns out computers are pretty good at math. In fact, I'd say they're a lot faster than people almost all of the time. In this video, we will look at seven mathematical operations that we can perform on variables and values in Python. I'm going to cover the first four operators fairly quickly, as you should be familiar with them for math class. We can add numbers together using a plus sign. And we can subtract numbers using a dash or subtraction sign. If we run these, of course we get 5 plus 10 is 15, and 5 minus 10 is minus 5. We can also multiply two numbers together using an asterisk. And divide two numbers using a slash. If we run these, we get 5 multiplied by 10 is 50, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. We can also combine these operators and perform one huge calculation. You might remember bed mass from math class. It helps us know what order to go in to solve a long problem like the one above. You might remember that bed mass stands for brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. Python uses the same order of operations as you've learned to determine which operator will be executed first. Brackets come first in bed mass and are the first operator that Python will evaluate. We can use this knowledge to change the order that our computer solves a problem. For example, if I wrap 4 minus 2 in brackets, it'll be executed before any of the other operators. There are three trickier operators we will cover as well. When you see the percent symbol, you are likely thinking of a percent number. But in Python, the percent sign is the modulo operator. It is used to get the remainder after division. You might remember long division, where we divide two numbers that don't go into each other perfectly, but there's a little bit left over that we might see as a decimal on a calculator, or call a remainder. For example, if we divide 5 by 3, 3 goes into 5 one time, but doesn't fit into it a second time. So, we could say that 5 divided by 3 is 1, with 2 remaining. We can do this in Python, and it is really useful in helping us determine if a number is even or odd. We would use the modulus function. Let us use the same example we just talked about, 5 divided by 3. The result is 2, because 3 goes into 5 once, and there's 2 left over. This is not the answer to the division problem but is the remainder only. Let's see if we can write a small program that uses the modulo operator to determine if any number is even or odd. First, let's get a number from the user. Then, let's print the number modulo 2. Let's run our program and try entering a few odd and even numbers. We got 0 for 4, and I'll enter 7, and we get 1. I'll enter another even number, and one more odd number. It looks like we get the result 0 for even numbers, and 1 for odd numbers. In a future section, we will learn how to print a more descriptive message to the user, rather than just these zeros and ones. The last two operators we will look at are the exponent operator and the floor division operator. First, the exponent operator. As you remember, the exponent means that you multiply a number by itself the number of times as the exponent. We use two stars, or two asterisks, to perform an exponent operation. In this example, 4 would be our base, and 2 would be our exponent. If I run this, we get 16, 
because 4 to the power of 2 is 16. The floor operator is a way of telling our computer to divide the numbers that you give it and round down to the nearest whole number. Even if the answer to your division pro problem is 3.9, your solution is rounded down to 3. We do this using two slashes. Here, we get 1 because 5 divided by 3 is 1.66 repeating, and our computer rounds down to give us 1. That wraps up all of the mathematical operators. Spend some time and experiment with these. You can even use Python as your shiny new calculator.